Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today for you guys, we have this awesome old Merkai list, which actually got me to 3,800 in just this, uh, just a single night. So very, very good list. Uh, I hope you guys do enjoy. If you guys love the content, make sure to like and subscribe. And guys, I am wearing glasses. It's not only for the look. I'm actually sick. I just finished my semester, but I got COVID and have puffy eyes. So uh, I kind of feel like I have like a shield by wearing glasses. And maybe I just don't look as sick. But if my voice is kind of weird in today's video, that's why. Uh, but still, semester's over. A lot more video uh, to come. I'm very, very excited. I'm going to be streaming uh, a lot. So uh, yeah, guys, we'll jump into the deck breakdown and uh, i hope you guys enjoy check it out so the list runs the old murkai the murloc tidehunters the quillbor the core hounds the griffin rider the chain lightning and the safe pilot so the whole idea of the list is obviously to play the old murkai but also then afterwards play the core hounds for a 10 gold push so we are going to have our old murkai with a six extra murloc from that core hounds we are going to have Pretty much a core hound in each lane with three murlocs behind it. And all the rest of our kit of the list is played to cycle back to uh, our main combo. So if you guys don't know, uh, the old Murkai ability has the ability of March of the Murlocs, which is the ability I'm th talking about of for five seconds after deploying summons a Murloc Tidehunter for each gold spent on other media. So during that five seconds after you play old Murkai, you are going to play your core hound and perhaps something else if you are generating gold. And uh, you're just going to have a bunch of Murlocs everywhere. And you're going to have a constant stream of pressure from Old Murkai and the Murlocs that are spawned. So we play Old Murkai and then we play our Core Hounds. Okay. And obviously, guys, we are playing Core Hounds with Eternal Bond where their res resurrection range is unlimited. So uh, by having them split up, if there's one that gets like stuck in the middle, you can actually click on the arrow to delay it as much as possible. But if they are separate, uh, the amount of resurrection you can get from a single wave of Core Hounds is actually very very insane so uh yeah core hounds guys for those who are not aware are resisted tanks that when one dies the other one uh revive the first one uh yeah and if you play if we play the eternal ball like i said you can split them and they will rise each other even if they are not close so core hound very very good with the burla uh, with the old murkai we just gotta have like a great split push of two different pushes uh, which is very very good so for the rest of the list we have uh the quillbore quillbore is very very good obviously you can play quillbore with whatever you want uh as a talent uh, I you go for tunnel vision, but the quillbore as an unbound media is played to uh, mostly tank, obviously. So if you have some murlocs that reach a tower and there's no core hound behind it, you can quillbore the other side, and then the murlocs are going to do a lot of chip damage. So quillbore very very good. You play to tank the tower, uh, distract like stuff like huntress if you're playing against a huntress, uh, stuff like that, and also very very good to counter the dark iron miner. So if you see a dark iron miner every single time you play your quillbore on the dark iron miner, so you kill the dark iron miner and he just lost two gold you have a quillbore um so quillbore very very good we also have uh the safe pilot so once again safe pilot is just a great great midi so the safe pilot is played like a spell the safe pilot crashes onto the battlefield he does damage or she does damage to uh the enemies a lot of damage and then she starts doing elemental damage from afar so uh she's very very good she does a crazy amount of damage she's very good to deal with some very important targets uh you can uh, nuke some uh, death ball push with like Dracosath list and stuff like that with exactly that list or that uh, spell spell that unit the safe pilot which is pretty much a spell uh, I play no wish cloak device I think it's a great talent some people play coming in hot which can also be very good Next up, we have the Tide Hunters. So I play the Murloc Tide Hunters because we want extra cycle, and I play the Tide Hunters with the safety bubble. So the t Murloc Tide Hunters are kind of just more Murlocs you can play, but they have a lot of utility because uh, you can split them, right? And uh, they will allow you to help uh, with the middle, and uh, they can help with uh, stuff like Griffin Riders, uh, safe pilots because of the uh, safety bubble and stuff, stuff like that. So Tide Hunters really, really good. Uh, you can replace it for something else but we need a beat b slot so that's why the uh, murlocs tide hunters are here 
Next up, we have the Griffin Rider. So the Griffin Rider, another two cost gold mini. So if you guys cannot see the trend, we're playing a lot of two uh, two cost gold or cycle minis because we're just, we can cycle back very, very quickly to our push and we just have a like, constant pressure on the map with old Murkai, core hounds, and just Murlocs everywhere. So Griffin Rider, another two cost gold mini, we're really, really good. And I play with uh, the Mighty Throw with the extra range, which is very good against the uh, Dragon Towers because they almost outrage the dragon tower so they take almost no damage they can also help the middle if you play it on the right it can help the middle which is also very very good so uh griffin rider fantastic mini um it just works perfectly in this list you could actually play something else in this slot if you really are struggling with uh paladins or paladins Tyrians and stuff like that you could play a polymorph or uh or like huntresses stuff like that polymorph can be very good so you could replace the griffin rider for polymorph uh, but I like having the Griffin Rider, or you could go also for Dark Iron Miner if you want more economy. But I find that like you're good enough with your single miner because you cycle so much back to your uh, single miner. So uh, yeah, I play Griffin Rider really, really good. And then finally, we have the Chain Lightning. I think the Chain Lightning is fantastic. You can play like Arc and Blast. You can play uh, something else if you really want. But I like Chain Lightning because of, of the uh, extra stun from Brilliant Flash, the talent. So uh, the Chain Lightning is very, very good. Uh, it's good to remove stealth. Uh, people aren't really running Goblin Sappers anymore, but uh, if they are, Chain Lightning is very good against that. Uh, it's very good against Wealth Eggs. You just destroy the Wealth Eggs completely. Good against Safe Valley. There's just so much value from the Chain Lightning. I think it's very, very good. Also, it does a little bit of chip damage to towers if you really need to. Um, yeah, so very, very good. So guys, quickly. Um, this deck is very, very solid, but it's there's some matchups that are really, really hard. Um, if you're playing against some execute cycle list, which there are plenty of them, uh, you need to defend your right base a lot. So a lot of the time, those lists will try, uh, try to rush your right base. Um, so you have to be aware of that and be ready to defend. Also, guys, if your opponent has Blizzard, uh, play your old Murkai on your secondary base, okay? Because if you play your old Murkai next to your base, your opponent will Blizzard the old Murkai and your base and get just too much value. So. The second you see your opponent has Blizzard, you never play your old Murkai on your main base. You play on your secondary base every single time, okay? This took some time for me to get used to, but it's really, really important, or you will just instantly lose those matchups, all right? And uh, yeah, I guess so execute cycle list, guys. You need to put some pressure on uh, once they do start their execute. You don't want to allow them to start doing their cycle, so you need to always have a constant uh, uh, stream of pressure. You need your quill board to surprise them with some murlocs to get some uh, free chip damage. Um, yeah, guys, and be creative with the uh, with the uh, core hounds. Be creative in the sense of try to separate them and keep one alive while the other one isn't, and, and try to like uh, vary they t their timing so that they keep resing each other, which can get very very crazy if you do get a couple of them so uh, yeah guys i hope you guys do enjoy this list uh this list brought me to uh 3800 uh in just like one night so very very solid list i really suggest you guys try it and uh, please tell me how it goes so yeah there's a, a few swaps you could griffin rider could go for polymorph if you kind of are struggling with uh some big stuff you can go for polymorph and then you can say follow the polymorph um, you could also go for Dark Iron Miner uh, instead of the Griffin Rider, so all good possible trades. And uh, yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoy. Please tell me in the comments down below, and uh, we'll jump to some PvP games, and uh, we'll see you guys there. All right, we are playing against the Charlga list. We have our old Murkai in hand already. This is great, but we do not have our Quillbore. We'll play our Quillbore now. We'll split our Murlocs down the middle. We'll send uh, our Griffin Rider here to help with the Prowler. We get a little bit of chip damage on us, unfortunately. Now we play our old Murkai with our core hounds. We will quill board to safe because we don't want our two more watch that. Then we can put our miner behind it.
put our Griffin Rider here to support. We could play our safe on the Chalka, but I think we are better off just playing another round of our combo. Sorry, Corhound is gonna go res the other one. Safe is dead. So we lost that, but we have our miner here. And we will be able to start a second round here. There it is. Old Burkai, Corhound, Urlocks. Our miner behind our push. We'll play our cool board here. And we will chain lightning those murlocs. And look at the damage. Look at the damage we're doing here. We'll start another push. We'll play our miner on the right side. We'll play our safe now on top of his. We'll bring our core health back to life. Chain like me. And this should be it. We got the win. Okay, we are playing against a Drakisath list. Play our Griffin Rider far back. Okay, so he has Blizzard. We split our Murlocs. Our Miter, and that's when we can start our combo here. Chain like the miter. We can save all of that. So he does play his blizzard. Which means we can now play our old Murkai Corehound Miner. We will play our quill. We'll wait for our first core hound to get hit, and then we'll play our quill more. So that the quill, uh, quill board gets uh, the aggro, and the other core hound gets res. But the polymorph does counter that. But if we can cycle back now, so he played his blizzard again. We'll start another push. And we do get some good damage in. We'll play a cool board middle. We'll play a chain lightning here. Our opponent is going to be Blizzard probably at this point. So he plays Polymorph. Okay, we will play our own Murkai. And a bunch of stuff here. And then we play our safe. We will take the win. Okay, we are playing against uh, Maev list.
We'll play our Griffin Rider far behind. And our Murlocs. And now we will start our combo. Oh, Murkai with Corhounds. We'll play the Griffin the Rider to support the left Corhound. Murlocs just to have a little bit more behind it. Okay. So he's playing Execute Cycle, so we are going to play a combo once again. We do have more damage than he does. Here. All right. There goes the Mayev. Miner here. Take care of the Maev. He will try to do something with the uh, Quillboard if, if our stuff survives. So he plays his Execute. And now we do have some chip damage. On our opponent's base, we'll cycle to our quill bore. We'll play it more aggressively, though, we have to. damage on our opponent's base. Okay, so he, he used his uh, execute defensively. And just like that, we're going to take the win. All right, we are playing against the Tyrion. Play the old Murkai. Play a Griffin Rider. Play the Grobor. Play a Miner. Play some Murlocs. We'll save the safe. You get a little bit of chip damage, which is good. Taz 
Dingo. There it is. Griffin Rider here. We'll play the Murlocs to help with the core hound here. I mean, this is not too bad actually. Bad at all. We'll send a minor heat down the middle, even though our right gold mine is full. Chip damage. Money, money, money. Where are we? Well, the Murkai with the core hounds again. Alright. Safe here. Do we have to chain lightning? No, we don't. That's great. Okay, he used his execute. Why? Why is the gr you guys saw that right? Why did Griffin Rider did an attack? I don't know. Now he's here in overtime, so he's gonna start to execute cycle. We're gonna try to get some chip damage here with like a kill board here. There goes another execute. Okay, we will need to go more aggressively. Here. Okay, you're gonna chain like me. You're gonna save. And we get the win! Alright, we are playing against the Thalnos list. He plays his minor, we'll play ours. Uh, can we cycle down? <laughs> Okay, I wanted to cycle to our chain lightning. Okay, we'll start a combo here. Oh, Murky, Car House. I 
we'll go try to safe now. Actually, Station. we did get some good damage. Oh, murky. Try to play our quillboard here. Okay, so he's playing sheep death as well. And then can we cycle to our quillboard? Starting at the push. Chain Lightning does it. We'll play a miter here because there's six gold in the middle. Spend a lot though. Let's go! We take the win! Let's go! 